All right, everybody. Uh, let's see here. It looks like we got about nine people on. Can you guys hear me? I did a bunch of testing yesterday, and I am scared to death that uh, this isn't going to work today. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see here. It looks like uh, we're getting some streaming happening here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick things off. Uh, there is about a, a minute delay, it looks like, between uh, what I'm saying and what you guys are saying, so be patient with me as I get to your, uh, get to your chat. Uh, it'll take a little bit for what you see to come through, just like I'm on Mars. Uh, a little delay here, so uh, kind of real-time stuff. Uh, Today I've got an overview that we're going to be going through. Uh, I had some subscribers ask some questions uh, in the uh, in the recent videos in the chats, uh, wanting to know kind of the status of you know where we're at. It seems like I'm kind of all over the place these days. Uh, 3D printing, shop redo, uh, uh, working on the life pod, building systems, doing farming, ranching, building chicken stuff. Uh, how does this all relate? Uh, so I wanted to uh, have a live stream here. I, I'm hoping to do more live streams uh, and uh, and to be able to share more of this type of stuff. Uh, it's something that Mrs. Martian and I have been talking about. Uh, she's going to be a lot more involved in things as well. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be walking through today kind of the status of where we're at. Uh, and well, I need to move this here. Nate, you're on it. <laughs> uh, something you should do when you're doing a live stream is mute your phone. I'll go, there we go. Turn this to mute. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay, phone is muted. All right. Uh, so uh, you're going to get an update today. I've got three screens going. So here's where my camera's at. Here's where the briefing's at, and here's where your guys' chats are at. Uh, so I'm going to be moving my head around here. It's just how I have it set up right now. Uh, I'm going to be working on getting a different camera so I can actually uh, kind of be more present here. Uh, but we did a bunch of testing yesterday and it seems like this, this setup seemed to work and the uh, people that spent their uh, Friday helping, uh, helping make sure that uh, it was all working, to, uh, it seemed like this is where we came to. So uh, let's see here. Uh, everybody, hello from Texas. Hey, Megan, how's it going? Good to see you online. Uh, hello from Belgium. Uh, good to see you guys online. Uh, hello from Norway. Wow, that's so cool seeing people online uh, from there. So uh, let's jump into uh, what we're going to be going over today. Let me uh, see here. This is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to be having, uh, I just want to kind of go over the status of the channel right now. I want to talk about uh, COVID uh, and how that's impacting us. Uh, kind of the build status, where we're at, uh, design status, where we're at, the budget situation, which will explain a lot of why we're all over the place, and then uh, moving forward, what we're trying to focus on. Uh, and then you guys uh, let you know, I have turned on Super Chats. Uh, so if anybody wants to help us out, uh, Super Chats are turned on. You can get there down at the bottom of your screen. Uh, in the chat window, you'll see a little dollar sign. You can click on that, and uh, any little bit helps these days. Uh, I hate to do that right up front. Um, I think we will see some uh, some buffering here. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. We tried yesterday to uh, 
change all the settings and everything. And unfortunately, you will get a little bit of buffering as we go through. Uh, it's just because we don't have great internet. Uh, right now, I'm talking to you via satellite, HughesNet. Uh, so there is latency issues uh, and all those types of things that go into uh, the stream uh, being difficult. But uh, let's see here. Uh, as far as the, uh, uh, the status of the uh, channel goes, we have gotten, we've just passed over 32,200 subscribers. That is pretty awesome. We've been gaining, uh, we've got um, about 20 to 30 new subscribers per day. So welcome to all those people that are new subscribers. Thanks for joining along. That's pretty awesome seeing that happen. Uh, we're being watched in over 50 countries, which is pretty freaking cool to think that this little channel is now being watched in over 50, 50 countries. Um, and we've just uh, recently, a few days ago, passed over 2 million viewers, um, 2 million views, excuse me. Uh, so that is pretty cool. And then, like I said earlier, I, I turned on uh, Super Chats, uh, eligible for that now, and going to try to do more of these live chats. So uh, I see that we're buffering here. I really don't like the whole buffering thing. Just pausing here, hoping that this buffer uh, catches up before I move on too much. Are you guys hearing me okay? Can somebody uh, say something on the chat there? Okay, uh, well, I was just checking to see if everyone's in a buffer. I'm gonna continue forward. Mine, my screen is showing a buffer here. Uh, so I'm gonna keep on going. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, okay, I have the buffer. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, hey everyone, I apologize. We tested yesterday for over an hour, uh, 20 different people from across the world trying to help make sure that this was gonna be set up right. So. Uh, I apologize uh, profusely. We, we really tried, uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue on here. Uh, so uh, try to limit the amount of stuff that's coming through. I'm just going to show the screen for right now. Uh, COVID has had a major impact on our lives, um, everybody's lives across the planet, of course, uh, some more than others, but on uh, Mrs. Martian and I specifically, uh, this is how it's really impacted us, besides just not being able to go anywhere, really. Of course, for us, uh, where we live is pretty awesome, so we don't really need to go anywhere. Uh, let's see here. So uh, from a logistics standpoint, uh, ordering parts has become difficult. Uh, as a single example of that, the PLA filament, the food grade filament that we need is a special order item out of Canada ordered over a month ago and it's still not here. Um, so that's that's really frustrating, kind of shows you the type of impacts that we're having. Other parts are flowing if they're from like Master Car where they have a warehouse in the US, uh, they're, they're coming in, uh, but the major parts that we need are really, really slow. Uh, and that's what that equals is time, right? The We only have so much money in the bank and when these uh, slowdowns occur, it takes away from our ability to sustain ourselves. And it's really kind of throwing us into a little bit of a tailspin here. Um, so 
that also is the same thing happening with the investors that we have. A lot of them were heavy into real estate uh, and we're getting, you know, COVID is reducing that type of uh, availability of funds or the stock market that's going up right now. It doesn't make any sense why the stock market's going up right now. I just don't understand that. Greed is out of control. Uh, the largest jobless claims ever and the stock market's going up. <laughs> uh, anyway, but uh, we also have people that are risk adverse um, and, you know, they, they won't they don't like it when the situations are like they are. I, uh, it, it's frustrating for me because I think what we're doing is, you know, the situation is calling out exactly why investors should be going with us right now is because we're working on the solutions to the problems that are right in front of us. Um, we've built two prototypes. We've built LifePod 2 or a life pop one, we've built have one, we've learned everything from those. Um, it's easy to think that we failed, uh, that I failed, uh, but you know, I've been going over all my old videos and all the things that we learned and we didn't fail. We actually did really, really good work. Uh, we did fail, but we learned from it and then that became successful. The collapse of the hab, the heating situation all taught us a lot of stuff. And now uh, those things uh, we're addressing in the new designs uh, and LifePod 2 and these new systems that we're putting together. So I think all in all, we've been very successful. Uh, we've had bumps in, in along the road, but it's actually been a, a very successful uh, road that we've been on. And it's really easy to lose sight of that. But I went back over all those old videos, like I said, and I was, I was really impressed with the stuff that we've put together and where we've come from. Uh, I had a question here, uh, you know, the hydroponic business, uh, videos from uh, Jama, Aiden, uh, you, you're wondering, you know, the runway here, how long is it going to take for us to show profit? Well, uh, HAB1, obviously, uh, that's done, um, but we are operating uh, or intending to operate these systems that we're building right now at a huge margin uh, of profit because of everything we learned. Uh, but to to get to where we need to be, you have to invest the capital, the R&D dollars, I should say, uh, to make sure those systems are going to work. So we are seeing uh you know we are seeing returns on that we just we just have to get them built <laughs> and that's the really hard part is convincing people to give us some money so we can go build these things so we can prove they work and finding the right people to help us with that has been a, a, a challenge um you know every all the investors we've had have been really excited about what we want to do but they all say the same thing you know you need to build it show me and uh we built have one, we built LifePod one, uh, but they, I think their investors are investors for a reason. They're very smart and they know how to get you to do as much as you possibly can with your money before they give you their money. So um, uh, it's, it's a chicken and egg problem from my perspective. Uh, so I think finding that right investor is still something that we need to do. And when we do that, then our runway will be identified. Uh, but as far as a timeline goes here within the next month or two, we're gonna know I'm actually going to be talking about that coming up. So I'm going to hold off on the rest of that because I got some material on that. Uh, let's see here. Frontcaster. Hey, thank you so much for the super chat. Good morning from Broski. Uh, awesome having you on. Uh, Gear, uh, we do have a PayPal. Uh, I don't have it linked on here right now, um, uh, but I will get it linked. Uh, we do have PayPal, though. Uh, so uh, appreciate you asking that question. Uh, another way that COVID has impacted us is uh, we had some people who were going to partner with us and help provide labor, and uh, that that did not work out. And now, because of COVID and the lockdown, I live in Washington State, and we are in lockdown uh, until I think it's May 14th. Uh, <laughs> well, we had volunteers, uh, but we can't have them here now. Um, you know, we, we have to do the whole, the only vector into our place as far as how COVID could get us is through the mail. So we have set up a COVID quarantine, you know, Mrs. Martian, you know, we, we uh, have all the UPS and FedEx packages, the freight packages, they sit in a certain area for so many days and then we wipe them off uh, out of precaution. And that's the only way that we could get anything here. It's the only vector in uh, to the ranch here, the Martian homestead. <clears throat> so we're pretty safe, but we can't get help. And that has really hurt us, that uh, we were counting on a specific partner and things just did not work out, not, no fault of anybody. It just uh, didn't work out. They had other priorities they needed to go focus on, totally understandable. 
um, but because we lost that labor support, um, our timeline extended tremendously because it's just me doing the work. Uh, it's fun work, but uh, when you only have so much money in the bank, the fun kind of leaves and the stress and worry come in. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, COVID has had a major impact on us. Oh, no, sorry. Yesterday, people told me the light in here. This will help out with the uh, white balance. Sorry about that. <laughs> Glad we did that test yesterday. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of the COVID impact there. Uh, welcome to everyone. I said we've got a lot of new folks who just joined online here. So uh, thanks for coming and watching today's live broadcast. Uh, we're going to be going through just kind of this briefing here. As a reminder, Super Chats are turned on. Frontcasters, thank you so much for your contribution. Really appreciate that. Uh, now I'm going to go into uh, kind of the build status. Uh, LifePod 2, so if you've watched our videos, then you know, you know, have one collapsed. We've partnered with Eating Grow Systems. I now work for Eating Grow Systems as the Chief Technology and Operations Officer. And uh, my job is to take the lessons from LifePod 1, which is what uh, Bart Womack and Eden built, uh, and have one, which is what I built. Uh, you can go to our website, www.eatinggrowsystems.com, see some of our stories there. Uh, and take those lessons learned and build LifePod 2. Uh, we were gonna build HAB2 first, but because of the amount of permits and everything that we needed to get for it, the timeline, again, the it, permits is just a process, uh, but it's because there's only so much money in the bank that we can't go and do, uh, do everything that we need to do in the timeline that we have. So we pivoted over to our mobile version, which is the trailered version that you've seen on the videos. And where we're at on that right now uh, let's go to screen mode here so you guys see this a little bit bigger, uh, is uh, pretty much the outside work is almost done, the outside work of the trailer, so to enclose it all the way that we need. We've got door one is on, door two's frame is ready to go. That's for the vestibule area where you walk in and you it's your transition area, your clean room, if you will. Uh, the rear wall is ready to install. Uh, we have it all cut and cleaned back there, but we need to get back there and install it. The belly bay uh, is still open. Uh, we need to do the weight test. The tanks have now arrived and the hosing has arrived so we can do the weight test. Uh, and we have scaffolding on the site now uh, to help work up high. Uh, you know, if you if you watch me, you know I've been up high on ladders and have one and I hate being up that high on a ladder. It's not my thing. I don't have a fear of heights. I have a fear of falling and that sudden stop at the ground uh, is what I'm really, really worried about. So uh, anyway, it's... Uh, we're, we're kind of at a pause there on, on the outside. Uh, in the inside work, we have a ton to do. Uh, lots of framing and, and parts and electrical and plumbing. Uh, nothing technically hard. So everything with uh, this project, if you want to go tell people about what we're doing, you know, everything about this project, there's no real technical risk except for the grow towers and the grow walls, which is what we're prioritizing to get done first. But everything else that we're doing for LifePod 2 is zero technical risk. It's all proven things, standard things. Uh, we're just putting them together differently. Uh, and the only thing we got to do is make sure all the electricity and the water and everything flows the way we want, like if you're building a house. I mean, it's, it's really no different. So there's zero technical risk in what we're doing. Uh, it's just a matter of labor and time to get it done. And then those grow towers and grow walls, that's where the real uh, technical stuff comes in. But that's all proven by others as well. We're just doing it differently, uh, kind of repackaging it to make it easier uh, for people to use. So uh, not a lot of technical risk in what we're doing remaining. From a build status to grow walls, uh, you've seen the videos, you guys are, you know, videos are about three weeks behind real time, just so y'all know. Uh, that's why if you wanna join us on Instagram or on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Mrs. Marsh has been doing a great job. Some of our partners have been doing a great job of putting material up there so you can kind of see behind the scenes and where we're at uh, more real time. Uh, we have uh, Daddy Dare, the uh, YouTube channel. Go check him out. Uh, Cody is awesome. And uh, this is a different Cody than our neighbor. And he has been voluntarily helping with our editing, uh, which uh, as you see all the work that I have to do, editing takes a lot of time. And uh, he's been doing a great job uh, helping us uh, do that editing. So our videos are a little behind real time because we're batching them up and we have to mail them to him. And then he edits them 
uh, we don't have the bandwidth and for everyone wondering you know why don't you just post the raw material online it's because we don't have the bandwidth we're on bandwidth limited internet so we don't have unlimited i wish we did uh but daddy dare has been or dad dare excuse me sorry cody uh dad dare on youtube has been helping us i love his editing I, I, he's just great uh he and his wife are expecting so congratulations to them but uh, he's been helping uh, but anyway, the whole point of all that is videos are a little behind real time because we do things that way. Uh, the 3D printing has proven its worth. Uh, we had a choice to make. Uh, I had sent out the grow wall designs to get manufactured by others uh, so that I could, you know, force multiply. If, if they're building it, then I don't have to. Um, and we got quotes back anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Uh, to do the prototyping builds. And uh, so we chose to invest $10,000 on that printer. Uh, that's 10 times less <laughs> than the cheapest quote we received back. And I sent it out to like 10 different vendors across the planet. Uh, and what we found out is I, I think the grow walls, they, they need a design uh, iteration, which I expected. Uh, there's no way you get it right the first time in design. I've never, ever, ever, ever have seen that in my entire professional career uh, spanning the Air Force and, uh, and industry. So we need to do a design iteration there uh, to make it easier. I am considering vacuum forming. Uh, a lot of people brought that to my attention through this channel. So thank you very much to everyone who did that. Uh, really appreciate that, but we don't, I need a machine for it. So uh, I'm, I'm worried about sending it out and the, the logistics issues and everything like that, but getting a vacuum forming machine uh, that could do like a two foot by two foot uh, um, vacuum form, we can use the 3D printer to create the mold and then do a vacuum form over that, but I need to do more research. Uh, so if anybody's interested in vacuum forming or knows someone or something like that and you wanna help out, you know, say something in the chat, shoot me an email at trm at therealmartian.com and we can figure stuff out. I'm also considering uh, like what we did with the grow towers, the grow towers aren't going to be made of plastic. They're going to be made of stainless steel. They're going to be beautiful. These things are sexy. I mean, they might be engineering sexy, but I think everyone's going to think they're like sexy, sexy. They're going to look really sharp. Uh, and uh, I'm considering shifting the grow towers or grow walls, excuse me, to a stainless steel design as well. It increases costs, um, but extends their life and uh, makes them easier to clean uh, and easier to manufacture as well uh, until we can get to like injection molding. Uh, you know, so maybe the first first ones are uh, are made out of steel, and then we, you know, get the investors, and we can tool up uh, and get the injection molding. But I don't know. You know, what do you guys think? So uh, the grow towers, the parts are on their way from Texas. Uh, thank you, Joe, and everybody for helping us out there. Uh, as soon as the parts get here, we're going to start fabricating those. Got some stainless steel welding. I got my trimix ready, uh, and we're going to get those built. And uh, we're not going to be doing rainbow trout this time. Uh, we are going to be doing, wait for it, wait for it, giant freshwater prawns. So uh, all those people who joined the channel, so you can see us uh, doing the hydroponic, aquaponic stuff, your day is going to come. You're going to see us doing it, and it's going to be with one of my favorite foods on the planet, which is uh, prawn. I, I love them. I love them. Uh, I think they're awesome. And the software app. Uh, we have an app that we're building uh, that's connecting the growers to the sellers and um, or growers to the buyers to the delivery people, uh, plus a whole bunch of other things in our Eden ecosystem. Uh, and we have a handful of volunteers. Thank you so much to, for all of you guys for helping out. Um, but right now, honestly, given the situation, it's hard for anybody to commit time outside of their family right now uh, as they focus on you know, a lot of them have kids. Uh, have family members that are older, um, have other responsibilities. So COVID is having a real impact on our software app as well. All right, so I'm going to check the uh, check our uh, comments here. Let's see here. Uh, Salazar, uh, I'm good with the plywood right now. I'm going to hold off on the uh, doing any more uh, any more build uh, upstairs. It's just something that I I just don't have the time for right now. Uh, but I really appreciate your offer. Um, Bill, hello from Canada. I think we talked about that. Uh, yeah, uh, house for sale. If you just watch the uh, channel trailer, uh, if you go to www.therealmartian.com or just on YouTube, go to the Real Martian channel, there's a, a trailer right at the beginning. And it says where we've been and where we're going. 
And if you watch that, it's a long video, it's like 20, 30 minutes long, but it'll give you the full description of uh, what we've done and uh, where we're headed with everyone. So I see we got some new people online. So hello, everybody. Thanks for following along. Um, I have watched Cody's lab. Uh, I've actually reached out to him a few times, but I think I'm way too small of a channel for him to pay attention to. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, from a design status, this one's pretty quick. Uh, I have a uh, more detailed design to do in LifePod 2. I have all the uh, preliminary design done and now I'm down to routing pipes and wires and stuff that's really detailed. So uh, I've done a VR walkthrough of it. I still have more stuff to put in there, um, but the design is uh, pretty much done. All the big stuff is done. Uh, we couldn't start without the big stuff being done. And then the grow walls, like I said, uh, we need a design update there. And the grow towers probably need some minor design updates. Uh, we just need to get them built. <clears throat> so let's talk about uh, let's talk about our budget situation. This one I'm I'm opening up to y'all. Um, I think some people think that <laughs> we make a ton of money on YouTube. Um, we don't. <laughs> uh, it's uh, this May 16th uh, will be one year, my one year anniversary of having left my job. Uh, and that means we've been uh, been working off of savings for a year now. Uh, and we're down to three months of savings left. And given all the impacts of COVID and the delays that we're facing, um, that could kill us. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to start uh, taking some action. So what have we done so far? Uh, well, the, the primary bill that we have is our mortgage. So uh, again, this is me opening up to you guys uh, and just kind of sharing where we're at. Uh, I called the mortgage company and asked them for a three month relief uh, to help extend our savings and they approved that. So really appreciate that. That's Penny Mac. Uh, so thank you to that company. They've been very understanding. Uh, we had insurance, COBRA insurance, uh, COBRA plan, you know, continuation of the insurance that I had. This is one I wish I, I'm kicking myself on, but we had full dental, medical, and vision for my wife, and uh, we canceled that. That was uh, $1,300 per month. Uh, I wish I would have done it sooner, but, you know, when you live in that type of comfort, having that security net there, uh, you don't want to get rid of it. Um, but then COVID struck, and I'm like, I ain't going to the hospital. <laughs> I mean, I have to be hurt. Like, I have to be injured. Sorry, what is it they said in football? Are you hurt or are you injured? <laughs> if you're hurt, you can play. If you're injured, you've got to go to the doctor. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the doctor if I'm injured. But if I'm hurt, if I got a boo-boo, uh, my wife will kiss it and make it better. But if I'm injured, then I got to go. But I ain't going unless there's, like, real issues. And, you know, so what's the point of paying for something if you're not going to use it? So uh, that's something that we did. And uh, now we're on the, the free free insurance, um, which just gives medical. And uh, we've canceled all of our unnecessary bills. Uh, really, we only have one left. That was television. So uh, we're just down to Internet and uh, streaming. Uh, very interesting when there's no TV you can turn on, you know, all you got is the internet and you have lim limited bandwidth, so you can only do so many things. So I think a lot of book reading is our future. As far as uh, people have been wondering, you know, how much money, you know, $3,500 covers our basic bills. I've updated this on our Patreon page. Uh, you can go there and check it out. The link's up above on the channel on the right-hand side, uh, or it's in the videos down below in the description as well. Um, we need $3,500 a month to cover our basic bills you know so that's our mortgage that's the biggest one uh, don't want to lose the house groceries kind of the next largest thing there groceries and household cleaning supplies especially nowadays um, those are expensive uh, we're gonna be trying to grow our own food well not trying we are going to be growing our own food this year so you're gonna see a lot of videos coming up of us growing our own food uh, to help offset those bills uh, but then our phone and internet you know got to do YouTube got to have all those things so uh, that is uh, a, a thing that we're going to be doing uh, to help offset, or we have to have those. We have we have to have phone and internet. Auto insurance, I called the bank, and or uh, my bank is where my insurance is through USAA, which is uh, because I was in the Air Force, it's my basically like a military credit, federal credit union, or credit union. Uh, and uh, they are great. They reduced, we put some of our vehicles into storage mode, uh, so we don't have to pay on them, uh, and reduce our insurance down as low as we could possibly have it, since we're not driving a lot right now, so we did that. 
we are on solar power, but in the winter, you know, we have a power bill and that averages out to about $100 per month uh, for those winter months because we get a lot of snow and when there's snow, there's no solar power. So um, that's about $100 a month. So that's that's our cover, our basic bills. 4800 uh, covers our extended bills. So this would be, you know, more gas money, uh, uh, paying for uh, our animals feed, uh, all those types of things. Uh, hay, you know, we got our hay bill coming up. That's $4,500 for hay. Uh, raising our own beef is a big thing. Uh, and this year we got to get our cows pregnant again. And uh, that's two years away from getting uh, beef, but then we could sell that beef. You know, we only need one cow for us. And then since we have two, uh, two cows, uh, that means we have another beef that we could sell, a uh, head of beef. And, and that's like $2,000 that, you know, we can get from that. So uh, that's going to help us out. Um, but that doesn't include any savings and $7,000 really gets us our full, bu full budget plus uh, insurance that doesn't suck. So that's, uh, that's a lot of personal information there uh, opening up to y'all, but that's, that's our budget situation. And if you're wondering what YouTube does uh, right now, uh, we get about $200 a month from YouTube and about $147 from Patreon. Uh, so that's about 347. So it's a lot of work to do all the videos and put them all up there. And we're going to keep doing that. Uh, we're really banking on YouTube as, as, as our way to help pay for these uh, bills. We just need to increase our quality, keep giving you good content, uh, engagement. We're going to be doing more live streams to have more engagement with everybody uh, in the hopes of growing the channel. And and uh, for the 42 folks online, you know, obviously you care about what we're doing. So tell everybody about it. That's how you can help out. Uh, you know, um, just try to get people to the channel and I'll give you some goals here coming up. All right, so moving forward, uh, what we're going to be doing uh, is uh, we have a new neighbor. Uh, we love our old neighbor. We're going to miss you. Uh, already do. So we have a great neighborhood. It's, it's gone through some changes. Our neighborhood is measured in miles, <laughs> square miles, uh, but it's a neighborhood nonetheless. It's community and it's great. So uh, uh, we're going to be working with uh, the neighbor here. I'm going to get to, I'm going to get to chats over here in just a moment. I see we got quite a few coming through. So I'm going to I'm going to get through this slide and I'll do a bunch of subscriber Q&A. So you guys load me up with questions over there right now uh, and, and I'll get to them. Uh, but our new neighbor um, has, we're working out, we've worked out a deal with him. He's going to help us out. We're going to help him out. Uh, so, and that's going to help pay the bills. Uh, so that's going to kind of be our top priority is helping him. So you're going to see some videos coming up where I'm building fence. Uh, we're going to be building some orchards, building vineyards. Uh, cleaning up, just uh, going through a bunch of stuff um, and helping out the neighbor in order to help us out. So um, somebody asked, you know, why are, why are you doing so many different things? I'm, this, this video here is, is trying to answer all that question, give you the big picture so you can understand our situation. So, you, you know, it's not just that I'm doing random videos. It's there's a lot of stuff I'm trying to figure out right now. Uh, but working with the neighbor is going to be a key way to uh, help us uh, get money. And uh, YouTube subscriber needs. So here, here's the here's the goals, folks. If you all can help out with this, this you know you're at home right now, uh, and you want something to do, help us do a media campaign, a media blitz, if you will. Uh, you know, I've looked. I had I had this um, epiphany the other. I've I've been really depressed, and you're going to see that coming up in videos in about two weeks from now. Um, it, it's this thing has really taken a toll on me. Mentally. Now I'm a Christian and I have a lot of faith and that faith is being tested because it's so scary. I, I, I had a job where I was making almost $200,000 a year, a year ago. And here I am now working for my neighbor, uh, building fence post. Um, that's extremely humbling. That is extremely humbling. And I am proud of the choice we made. I do not regret it, but I'm scared of how am I going to pay for everything? How am I going to take care of my wife? That's my job. I'm the provider. How am I going to do that? And Alicia and I are working together on that. Uh, she has the blossomingtable.com. Go over there, check that out. Uh, tell your wives about it. Tell your girlfriends about it. Tell, tell everyone about it who likes natural living, organic uh, food, uh, recipes, inspirational messages. Uh, my wife does an amazing job. I'm so proud of her in that site. Um, that's part of how she's helping out. We've also got some products that... Um, you know, we spend a lot of money on cleaning supplies. So we've been doing a lot of research and she's found a solution that we're going to be sharing with everybody uh, that we think is going to be really good. So go check out that, theblossomingtable.com. 
Uh, reminder, eatinggrowsystems.com. You go check us out there. And of course, you got us on The Real Martian. But um, <clears throat> trying to figure out how to pay for everything is really scary. So here, if you want to help, uh, help us get more subscribers. And I have to do my part. Uh, the content needs to be good. So continue to give me constructive criticism. There's so many haters out there and those comments hurt, uh, being quite honest, but it's just part of being out and exposed in the public square. It's just, that's me. I get a, the shoulders have to bear that. But if you really want to help, just get us out there, tell people I'll do my part. We'll make better content. We listen to you. We try to improve. We're doing more live videos, more engagement. Uh, you can check us out on Patreon, uh, which I'll talk about here in a moment, what we're going to be doing there. But here, here, here are the goals. So 50,000 gets us about 50,000 subscribers in theory. It's all theory right now. YouTube's really dropped their revenue because of COVID. Uh, gets us half our mortgage. Like, and we're at 32,000 too. Uh, so that's, if we can get there, if you could help us get there, that'd be great. 75,000 pays the mortgage. Um, 100,000 is two thirds of that basic budget and 110,000 is the full budget. And uh, we need your help. And uh, like I said, we've got to do our part, uh, but that's what we got to get. Uh, so big numbers there. So uh, if, you know, there's lots of videos out there like YouTube just makes all this money. Well, yeah, it makes a bunch of money if you're doing makeup and videos about kid stuff. But for us adults and the stuff that we're doing, uh, the only way that I can really get money is from sponsorships um, or lots of subscribers. And uh, so we're going to keep working hard. I think you've seen the quality improve. Our audio quality, we keep working on that. Um, like I said, more live broadcasts, everything. We've been doing a lot more of those things, and we're going to keep doing more. One thing that we're going to do more of is uh, Patreon. So I think we've made the decision to just stick with Patreon. We we're going to turn on YouTube memberships, uh, but Patreon seems to be better. They don't take as much money. We do have a PayPal. I'll, I'll get that linked up. I think I put it up in the link up top. I think there's a PayPal link up there in the banner on the page, but uh, I'll make sure I get that out there. Um, on Patreon, we'd really like to try to get the $3,500 for the basic uh, budget there. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is uh well we got rid of our tv so we need some entertainment so we're, we're like thinking creatively here is uh, and i've been uh, if you probably haven't noticed it but i've been going through and really trying to upgrade the game on our thumbnails and there's over 400 videos now so it takes me a while to upgrade all these thumbnails but uh the old videos have a lot of great content oh this is the epiphany sorry i totally spaced this so i'm laying in bed talking to god and i'm like is what we're doing making a difference or am I just wasting my time? Have I made a huge mistake? And we have one video in particular, how to build aquaponic grow beds that has earned over 250,000 views. Uh, that video alone makes about $35 per month. And what, and it has over 97% likes. What that means is that there's a bunch of people out there right now that have had the switch turn on that depending on the system isn't a good idea. You need to start growing your own food and they are finding the Real Martian channel and they are, they are learning from what we did. Now, I made a lot of mistakes, but you know what that is? Because we recorded it all, those people aren't going to make the same mistakes that I made. So we are value added and a lot of people are finding value in that. And that's the epiphany is... The journey that we're on that we've shared, even though it hasn't worked out exactly the way that I would like it to, it is having a major impact in people's lives to the point where over 2 million views in 50 countries and one video that has over 250,000 likes on it or views with 97% like rate, that means people are finding value in what we've done and we are having an impact. And that is such a good feeling. So we are definitely all in on YouTube and we're gonna keep sharing our progress. So the things that we've experienced, other people will find eventually in our video library and they can use it to learn uh, and not make the mistakes we have and to learn from the successes that we've had, like the microgreens, the successes and failures. Hey, we made $15,000 in like three months off of microgreens. That's a success, uh, getting, going from zero and not knowing how to grow microgreens and then in a few months making $15,000, that's a pretty big success. Now, along the way, you guys followed, you've seen there's a lot of failures there along that road, um, but we came out on top in the end. Um, 
the problems that we had were going to the next level so we can have that positive margin because we needed to grow more in order to cover the basic costs. But as far as making it to that point, we did it. And then we made a decision not to take that next step because it's not where we wanted to go. We felt we were getting distracted by following the money rather than doing our mission, which is to provide sustainable food and energy independence to people around the world, right? So small communities and families, that's where we wanna help. And microgreens don't really help the small families. They're not very sustainable because you need all the seeds, right? It's easy to grow, but you gotta get the seeds from somewhere. So anyway, uh, what we wanna do for Patreon, whew, I talk a lot, is to uh, go through all the old videos and uh, what we're gonna offer is uh, like a 30 day watch period for uh, our patrons uh, to where they get to watch the videos, no advertisements, no nothing, uh, just the pure video. And uh, you get to see it uh, where Mrs. March and I are gonna sit down. We're gonna watch those old videos starting with the very first one, which is horrible. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I did that video. And uh, we're gonna go through and, and share with you our experiences from that you didn't see on the camera. You know, like here's all the stuff that went on behind the scenes. Here's, here's the pain, here's the suffering, here's the successes. Uh, you're going to get to see all of that uh, as our patrons. So um, patrons, it's, it's just going to be um, whatever you want to give per month. Um, there's no different levels uh, from $1 a month, which would be great. If, if You know, all we need is 3,500 people to go on and give a buck a month, and then we hit our goal. Um, but you're going to get all these watch, um, these videos that are specific for you for the first 30, 60, 90 days, something like that. And then we'll open them up back to the YouTube public uh, so they can get the lessons learned as well, because that's what we want to help people. So uh, if you like that idea, head over to Patreon, join up, and you're going to start seeing those videos uh, come online. Uh, and I, I think it's a good idea. And if you have other ideas, please let me know. And the project build, I'm going to get through this and we're going to do some questions. So get your questions up on the chat. Uh, grow towers are a priority. Once the material gets here, we're going to build those up. And uh, we're going to uh, make that all happen. Uh, we need to prove that they work, uh, which I think they're going to probably need a little bit of tweaking, of course. Um, but they're aeroponic towers uh, that have aquaponics in them. That's kind of unique. Uh, and we can grow potatoes and carrots and onions and root vegetables, garlic, corn, hemp, everything like that. Uh, lettuce, leafy greens, herbs, all the stuff that traditional aquaponics folks like to look at. But we get to do more than everybody else. Our system is going to be the most diverse crop growing system on the planet. I have yet to see anybody else compete with what we're going to be doing. We're excited to get those up. Then we're going to work on the grow balls and then the app. All right, so let's go over to uh, some questions here uh, on the chat. So I'm going to scroll backwards here. All right, we did the video. Yeah, so Rob, 3D print prototypes. Yep, that's what we're doing. Full the metal for limited run production, injection mold or vacuum form, high quantities. Yep, that's exactly what we want to do. Salazar, uh, yeah, when we get to plumbing, I'll definitely give you a holler. Shoot me an email on that, trm at therealmartian.com, so I don't forget. Um, all right, so uh, pooping Android, that's a great ha handle there. Uh, we have been using internet. Uh, Sorry, let me show. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't know why that's that's a problem. But anyway, uh, yeah, we are going to be doing, uh, we have uh, unlimited internet and we've been using our cell phone uh, service uh, for that. Uh, and that's how we get to watch some videos now on Hulu and uh, Amazon Prime. Uh, so, and I've got a cell phone repeater set up to help with the quality. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on that actually so you guys can see everything. That, that we've gone, because I've tried everything. Uh, yeah, currently the best way of growing your community is using Community Tab. Uh, okay, I will continue to, I will try to get uh, more on the uh, Community Tab. Uh, ask Cody for a million, yeah, that would be nice. Uh, thank you, QA, things are getting better. And Cody has invested with us already. Uh, Cody is a cool dude. Uh, yeah, so you think uh, re-editing would be a good way to do things, Rob? Uh, and putting those videos back up, that might be cool. And yeah, a couple of miles apart, yep. The inside of the trailer is going to look very space age, uh, to answer that question. Um, that's going to be really clean, it'll be white. 
uh, with LED lights. It'll be natural LED lights, not the purple that we did before. Uh, natural is being proven to be the better way to go with infrared in it uh, and some UV. Uh, so we've got those lights uh, here uh, that we'll be using for the grow towers uh, and the grow walls. Uh, so it'll be a white inside. Um, if you can think of Minority Report, or no, the Matrix, Matrix Revolutions, uh, where uh, they were all sitting in the control area, you know, for uh, Zion, uh, that white kind of motif, that's what we're going to be doing. It'll be very clean, very easy to clean, uh, but that's what the inside of the trailer is going to look like. And it'll be grow walls all the way along the, the vertical walls and grow towers along the middle. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what it'll look like on the inside. Um, okay, guy with crazy ideas. No, we don't have any kids. We haven't been blessed with that yet. Uh, we would love to have them. All of these times, uh, it's all kind of scary. Uh, SpaceX-like. Uh, what do you mean, Iridium? What do you mean by SpaceX-like? Oh, you mean how it's going to look inside? Is that what you're talking about? Starlink would give us better service, uh, for sure. I'm, I think maybe I'm getting buffered on my comments here because I'm pumping out live video. Let me go over just the screen here. Oh boy, not that screen though. Not that screen. All right, screen only. That hopefully this will. All right. Yeah, the we have the box. We have the little. Um, we have uh, the little uh, MiFi box, so we're not using just the cell phones. We have a cellular uh, router uh, that is giving us internet, so that is our primary thing. All right, we have a super chat here from Rob. How do you measure food density in a system like this, and how much more dense is your system compared to others? Well, I think you're probably talking about uh, you know yield per square foot. Uh, what I look at is you know. I look at surface area is how I'm looking at it and then spacing. So you can't, well, you can plants. Uh, oh, I need to go camera here so you can see my hands here. So Rob, uh, you probably know this, but others may not. Um, plants excrete a, a pheromone and they don't like to be too close to each other. So when you, if you try to go really, really dense, you can do that when the plants are young, right? And you'll see that. That's how people start off planning is they'll put them like two inches apart from each other like this in a square, right? Uh, and then they expand that into your raft system. But as they get older, what you'll notice is they'll start taking every other one out. And the reason for that is because of this pheromone that the plants release that uh, tell other plants to get away. So if you don't spread them out uh, to their minimum spread, then they start to, they will not yield what you want them to yield. So density it is not a matter of just how many things you can shove in a square area. It's, it's how much you can get given the plants. So it all depends on what you want to grow. Uh, now, as far as total yield and quality of yield, I think one of the things that our system will be able to do that others will not is that we can have multiple harvests, uh, like in potatoes. Our, our potato tower that we have, you'll literally be able to take, it will be unzip a door, a uh, food grade door, you unzip it, and then you can just go reach in there and grab your potatoes right off of it and zip it back up and it'll grow more potatoes. Uh, so we'll be able to increase our yield. Um, and if you look at it as yield per volume, we're gonna have a higher yield because um, in a in like a garden, uh, you only have your your basic one level that you're growing. Uh, so your, your yield per unit of volume is going to be lower in a garden than an indoor growing system that has multiple decks so that uh, my entire volume uh, can be used. So I think probably a better way to measure yield would be continual yield, um, you know, or time between harvest, uh, mean time between harvest, MTBH is what I've used. Um, and then also your uh, total yield per volume, unit volume. So appreciate the super chat and hopefully that answers your question. And I think any indoor growing system uh, is going to have a higher uh, 
mean time between harvest and a higher, or sorry, it'll be a lower mean time between harvest because you can harvest more often, uh, and it will have a higher uh, yield per unit volume than a traditional garden. Uh, why are we not being funded by our government? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I, when it comes to funding, um, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm not good at that. Uh, just put that out there. I'm not good. That's why I have a, a team that is good at that. Um, and I'm not, so I, I don't know the answer. I, it's funding is frustrating to me. I'll be honest. Here's the, here's the frustrating thing for me is when I first started this, uh, over 11 years ago now, that's when I started researching. It was five years worth of research. So it'd be six years ago that we started this whole journey. I met with an investor that it, I, I knew through people, I was able to meet through people that I knew. And they, he, younger gentleman, young 50s, uh, and, and invested in a lot of different things. And he told me, like, you have a great idea and what you're doing is going to help people. And I really appreciate that. But if I can't see it, I'm, I'm not going to invest in it. So we built Hab One and then I followed back up. Nothing. That was uber frustrating. Um, I think maybe the YouTube channel and how I presented myself may have hurt me because we put it out there. And um, maybe that was a bad thing to do. Uh, I don't regret it now at all. I'm really happy we did it, but maybe that's a reason why we can't attract investors is because I put my successes and failures out there. I think it would be appreciated that I have an, enough uh, spine. Uh, I have big enough shoulders to go put all this stuff out there, be made fun of, be criticized, uh, and still move forward. Uh, and persevere. I think those are those. I, I'm very proud of those characteristics. Like proud, positive. Like not. I'm better than you, but I'm. I'm happy that I have those characteristics, and I think it would be a good thing for investors. But uh, I'm not seeing it. We built LifePod One. Eden built LifePod One. You know, it works. Uh, still works. Still operational today. Um, have One collapsed, but it was operational. The big thing that we learned from Have One is all the stuff that you need to fix so you can have good margin, right? It's all about margin if you're going to do this thing um, for profit, for a commercial. And it's all about margin if you're going to run it at your house. Uh, because a system that has high margin means it has low cost and high yield. And that's what you want. If you're a private person and you, you want to have a system that's efficient, well, then you want one that can do high margin. And, and we've learned how to do that. We, now it's just a matter of building that system. But the investors don't want to give us money unless we build exactly that. And, and that's a chicken and the egg situation that frustrates the hell out of me is they want all this stuff to be done on our dime. But I'm like, I need money now. Like you've seen what we're capable of doing. You've seen the perseverance. You've seen that when the shit hits the fan, we stick it out and we keep going. Those would be the things that I think people would want to invest in, but we cannot find those people. Instead, we find people who are risk adverse and uh, they keep telling us the same thing. Show me the system, show me the system. I, they, and working with the government is challenging because you got to, we have looked at SBA and all that, um, but you've got to have government accounting systems put in place, which costs more money. And I'm running off of savings. So it's like, do you go invest in a government accounting system or do you pay the guy that is doing all the work and only has three months of savings left. And then if he's done, then you've got a great accounting system and nobody do the work. You know, I think what you're seeing with us is what it really takes to be an entrepreneur. And it is hard. It is really, really hard. So um, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, Rob, I agree. Have one was a different... It was a decent proof of concept and no, it couldn't be, we, I would not go sell have one right now. Uh, you couldn't do that. And, but what it did is it showed us all the things that had to be fixed. And that's what we're doing with the have two and life plot two design it's all the issues that you've seen. They've all been fixed. It took me that year. I told you it's, it's been a year since I left. Well, the first eight months were all design and analysis, right? Uh, I spent a tremendous amount of time going through all the mistakes that we made and fixing them. Hey, Farmer Brad, good to have you on. Uh, thanks for following you. Man, your channel's awesome, dude. I love watching you. Uh, yes, we'll be able to get three harvests per year or more. And yeah, uh, I forgot to say, so we are applying for grants and stuff. 
Uh, we've applied for the uh, small business assistance program, although I, I noticed that that ran out of money. Uh, so uh, we applied for it, our team was on it. And as soon as uh, it opened, we applied, um, but I see it just recently ran out of money. Uh, so I don't, I don't know how it's gonna help us uh, right now, but uh, anyway, the girl will be able to have the large flat areas with PVC sheet. Yes, uh, Farmer Brad, yeah, that's kind of the idea uh, that we're going with there on those uh, in the redesign is I could create the flat panels maybe out of vacuum seal or out of sheeting and then have them kind of slide in for at least the prototypes until we can get money for tooling. Uh, I appreciate that guy with crazy ideas. Uh, I've been uh, I've I've been accused of being too honest, uh, but you know what? Uh, when, when I worked, I worked for ten years at uh, uh, in situ the subsidiary. Great folks there, great company, uh, really good people that I miss to this day. Uh, stressful, hard work for me, uh, and uh, but I remember <laughs> we were joking like. Here lies Jeff Raymond, you know, the things that you want to be known for on your gravestone. Here lies Jeff Raymond. You knew what he was thinking. And I'm, I'm proud of that. I, I, I can get in trouble, but I would rather have you know what I'm thinking and have you know the honest thing than to think that I'm playing a game with you or trying to manipulate you. Uh, it hurts me and it helps me. Uh, it's like my greatest strength, my greatest weakness, right? I need, sometimes I just need to learn to shut up and uh, I'm still having a hard time with that. 42 and still having a hard time. Uh, okay. Uh, have we reached out to Mother Earth News? Um, I, we have tried, and I think we're just not big enough. And I think because we have technology and farming, like we are, we we're in this ex, this interesting place where we have uh, we're not exactly what homesteaders want to see because we have technology, and we're not exactly what technologists want to see because we do farming. And I personally feel that what we're doing is finding that nice point in the middle where we're not just trying to apply technology just to be a technology company. No, what we're doing is trying to apply technology in such a way that it reduces labor, right? And it makes it easier to grow food and you don't have to go through this steep learning curve like what you've seen us go through. We want to take all the lessons that we've learned and that others have learned and turn that in essentially into a computer program so that people in their homes can grow food easily and not have to go through this, you know, year long or multiple years or, you know, PhD of school of hard knocks to figure out how to grow a carrot. You know, when we first started, we were just like everyone else who first starts food, if you've never farmed before, and that is, oh, how hard can it be? Seed, soil, water, sun. Duh. Like, no. Everyone who's grown food knows that that is total horseshit. <laughs> you need horseshit. <laughs> but no, it's hard to grow food. In fact, it's amazing that we can even grow food on this planet. Everything has to be so perfectly right for it to work. And uh, it, it takes, it's a true skill set. Uh, to learn how to grow food successfully, sustainably, uh, inexpensively, and with quality without using herbicides and pesticides. It's hard. Uh, we want to make it easier, and we believe we are going to. So the technology that we're using is meant to do that, to make it easy, not to just be cool. That Technology for cool sake is bad technology. It's cool, but whoop de do. You know, what we want to do is apply the right amount of technology at the right time, the right place to help people grow their food more easily and reduce that learning curve. So the, I, I think everyone's going to learn through this COVID experience that they need to grow their own food again. I think that's where we're all headed. I believe that. I, I kind of think we're headed towards a depression and I think we're all going to learn the hard way that depending on a global infrastructure to deliver your food is a bad idea. So uh, we want to make it easier. So I don't know why people aren't just like flocking to us going, Hell yeah. Uh, maybe it's me. Is it my personality? Is it what I've done? Have I screwed up? Tell me. Say it in the chat. This is where the chat's at. Say it right now. Like, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I want to hear that because I want to fix it. Right. And I mean, our whole livelihood depends on this. So tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, let's see here. Some more stuff. Afternoon, Ian. Good to see you on again. Uh, uh, yes, the idea, Farmer Brad, is that the grow walls and grow towers 
are all going to be consumer products that can be bought separate from our overarching systems like HAB2 and LifePod2. We're going to have those up on the eatandgrowsystems.com website. Uh, here, once I, I cut over and, and get some renders and stuff done, uh, once I'm happy with the design, uh, you'll be able to buy them and sign up for them early if you like. Uh, you can go over to the eatandgrowsystems.com right now and sign up for the newsletter and just put in there like, hey, I, I want to know about your grow towers. You know, do that. That would be very helpful uh, so that we can see and measure the interest in these things. I know the pictures aren't up there yet, but uh, you get the general idea. So if you're here, or if you got other people, there's 41 people right now on here. Go, go check it out. Um, Uh, carrots are hard. I was never successful with carrots. Always shaped more like a bee. Yeah, the carrots that we got out of HAB1, they actually came out like, you know, carrots. Some of them look kind of funky. They had multiple fingers, you know, coming off of it. Uh, but we were able to do that. I think with the aeroponics, we'll be able to get really nice looking carrots. Um, well, Pooping Android, I really appreciate you uh, giving a shout out there to your friends. Um, Yep, uh, up there, John, 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 John. All right, I'm looking, John, looking, John. All right, community tab, is that what you meant, John? I read that one, yeah. Uh, is there another one that I'm missing? Off-grid box, I'll check that out. Farmer Brad, thanks for that. Okay, um, well, we're gonna have our control system in place, Farmer Brad, I'm just looking at your comment here. Um, we are gonna have a control system that we'll be able to sell. Uh, it's gonna be part of our uh, towers. Actually, ours will all be built into the towers, but we can modify that uh, for others. So we will be able to do that. It's just, you know, all of this stuff right here, Here's the real problem, folks. Uh, let me go. Let me go back over to this. And all right, right here. This is a problem. We got three months of savings left, and there's we can't get help um, without money. Um, so what? Well, there's a lot of stuff we can do. I know it. I know there are so many things we can do to help the world right now. And I'm so excited about the app alone. If we could get the app out there right now today, then we would be able to help people. The the farmers who are growing food, just here's the app. You, I just grew something, right? Okay. Snap it with the phone. All right. Automatically fills out a bunch of stuff for you. This is a, what we want to get to. And you put it up on the marketplace, the digital farmer's market. Everyone in your local area sees that it's there. Consumers are on there just like Amazon. They're presented with an Amazon storefront the same way that Amazon would do it. Very easy, very familiar. Uh, and then they're like, I want to buy that. They're going to sign up with you for a monthly subscription. That's a CSA, digital CSA. Uh, or they, they come through and, and buy, and then that connects with a delivery person. Do you want it delivered? Yes. Okay. Here's a delivery person who wants to get paid right now. They go pick it up. Boom. And the farmer only has to worry about growing food because going to a farmer's market is one of the things farmers hate the most. Um, you know, some people are extroverts and like going, but most people hate packing up all their stuff and going into town and sitting all day long in the hot sun, dealing with a bunch of people coming and touching all their stuff and not buying. Uh, so we want to, that's what the eat in app is going to do. Uh, that's, Right now, that would be here. It's just people, time, money. That's what we need. Uh, for me, three months of savings left, like I'm having to change my behaviors. I have to work for my neighbor now to help pay the mortgage. Uh, I can't do this stuff full time. Uh, we need money. Right, that's the bottom line. Uh, so that's the hard part is there's lots of stuff we can do. Controls for people. Uh, we've done that. Uh, we could do those things. Uh, it's just money and getting those investors. It's really, really hard. It's, it's not easy being an entrepreneur, that's for darn sure. So uh, let's see here, some more chats. I think we're we're a little bit over our hour here, so I think that's uh, that's probably about it for us.
The app is going to do both, uh, Rob. The first piece of the app, the minimum viable product, the MVP, is the connecting uh, to the people. And then the next step that we're going to do as we get the systems out there, it'll also control those systems. It, it's going to be an ecosystem app. So it, it's going to attach to a lot of different things seamlessly. Uh, I just gave you the first little big piece that we want to put out there. Yeah, the mortgage has got to get, dude, if I can't pay for the mortgage, I, I mean, here, I mean, it's really simple, right? This is a prior, this is triage. Take care of family has to happen first. Uh, if we lose everything, then we can't take these good ideas and we can't take all the work that we've done. We can't keep doing YouTube. We've, uh, it, it's just, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I know I'll probably get some haters when they watch this video on their own and tell me how horrible a person I am for saying I need to take care of ourselves first. But I mean, we have to take care of ourselves first. Uh, we've got to get those basic bills covered. Um, if we can't, then we keep burning through that, uh, that monthly savings and uh, we can't run that to zero. Um, that's an unacceptable solution. Um, cause if, if it gets down to a certain level, then we have to sell everything, right. Uh, and stop all stop. That's ultimate failure right there. And we don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, we got to get the mortgage covered. That's what I care about first is get the mortgage covered. If, if I get those basic bills covered, get the money coming in, then that frees up a whole bunch of space up here that's right now filled with how am I going to pay those bills? Uh, and that's a major issue. So the the place where I can get the most money right now is working for my neighbor uh, and uh, doing the basic task, uh, you know, helping people learn how to build an orchard and build a vineyard and do fencing. You know, those would be things that help people, uh, which is our mission. We want to help people. Uh, so that's good, but we've still got to pay the mortgage. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay, yeah, so have they, has our auto insurance, yeah, Farmer Brad, uh, we talked about that right at the beginning, but yeah, uh, our mortgage company has given us three month break uh, and our auto insurance company has reduced it down uh, to the bare minimum. So we got that reduced as much as we can. Killed the TV uh, bill and uh, we can't really kill any other bills at this point we need our phones we need the internet and we need our electrical uh even though we're on solar uh we still you know during the winter months we still have to pay for uh electricity so it averages out about a hundred dollars per month uh, and you have a basic connection fee of thirty dollars per month even when you're making power uh, what we really need to do is uh john back to your question we need to be able to pay you know we have volunteers helping out with our software and I am so grateful for them. But like I said earlier, they have a family, they have elderly people uh, that they're caring for, taking care of, they have jobs, uh, they have kids that they need to do homeschooling with um, now because of COVID. Uh, so their time and availability is very limited. What we need to be able to do is really pay someone. So, you know, if I had one software person for a year equivalent, one FTE, uh, we could really bang some stuff out. So that's gonna be like $150,000 to really pay for that FTE uh, somewhere around there, 100 to 150. I mean, uh, that's what we would need to really get going more than just the minimum viable product. That's like really developing and sustaining it because you got to put the servers in place, put the architecture in place, make sure legally you're taking care of uh, liability issues, all those things. There's a lot that goes into building an app that's not just making a cool user interface. Um, so, that would be a good number to kind of have. Um, if we could just pay someone, that'd be good. Uh, I can tell them what to do. We have it all. I have it all decomposed. It's all all the use cases, all the connectivity, the systems engineering I've completed. That's all done. Uh, it's just a matter of implementation at this point. And uh, I can code, but, I'm, you know, it's one of those things that I, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. It would take me a long time to create a good product. Um, so that's one that we really need to get good people. And again, the volunteers are awesome, uh, but we really need to be able to get some money to them to, you know, say, hey, we're paying you for this now and uh, we can start moving forward. But right now it's just tough. The world's changed. I, I'll be honest. I don't think my feet are back underneath me from this whole, I don't think the world's going back to the way it was at all. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how I fit in this new thing with all these things that we're trying to balance. So it's tough. Uh,
So, John, um, I have the playlist on our homepage. Every video is monetized uh, on The Real Martian. So if you just went through and started playing videos however you want to watch them, um, there are, I think, six playlists on there, and uh, they contain everything. Uh, so you can you can see see it all there. Hey Jeff, good morning to you. Uh, we are an Amazon affiliate. You can get to our uh, store by going to www.therealmartianstore.com. The link is also up above and down below. Uh, we've really spent some time on the storefront, adding all the products, and I'm trying to do a better job, Brad, of putting stuff into the descriptions uh, for you know so that people can go over there. Uh, we also shop through it, uh, and that helps. Um, but uh, we definitely need to get. Uh, it, it's all it's all about volume, you know. We we need to get more subscribers. We need to get bigger reach, and uh, you know, going through the biggest improvement we needed to make to the challenge to the channel were the thumbnails. They all suck because before I wasn't doing it full time. I was working a full time job. I was doing the hab. I was reaching out, making partners, doing you know talks and all that stuff. And I didn't spend any time on thumbnails. In fact, it's really quite embarrassing how bad the thumbnails were. Uh, and I'm going back through every thumbnail right now. And it takes me about 20 minutes per thumbnail to refresh myself on what the video is about, uh, change the title, increase, improve the description, um, make it more navigable, update the keywords so the SEO is better, and then create the image. Uh, and I've spent, like I said, go to my channel and just see the, the images. If you go to the videos, on the channel and then sort oldest to newest and you, you can see the old videos and just how horrible those thumbnails were and um, thumbnails for those that don't know they're the number one driver for click-through rate so we get like millions of impressions impressions are how many times our videos are shown to people like they're presented on the screen and it's measured in the millions it's, it's really i'm shocked at that I, it's really a cool thing to see that but click-through rate is how many of those impressions turn into people watching. And our click-through rate uh, flutters around 3.5 on average, which apparently is good from a marketing standpoint. That's what I've been told. And it's increasing. Ever since I've started improving those thumbnails, we're now above four. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to get those old videos to be a lot better thumbnail. It's great content. Uh, the editing wasn't perfect the, some of the audio choices that i had were kind of corny uh but you know that's cool it's like season one you know uh, you know season one of any sci-fi show kind of sucks <laughs> uh except for stargate stargate was a good season one but they got better as they went so even though stargate sg1 was a good first season megan you know i'm talking to you uh the uh the other seasons got better and that's how ours is so We've improved the channel. We've gotten more click-throughs, but it's still um, not good enough. We're, I mean, we're getting better, uh, but we got to do. We still got to up the game, and we got to have better content. And you know, I'm trying to get sponsorships. I'm trying to reach out to people to send us products to do product reviews because that's a great way to attract new subscribers. Yeah, you know, if you guys didn't know this, when you want to grow your channel, you really want to focus on non-subscribers. Um, because those are the people you're trying to get into your channel to become subscribers. Your subscribers, we do this for subscribers. We, you guys know us, so I got to talk to you. I got to engage with you. This is the value of YouTube. Uh, same with Patreon, right? You, you're there because you want to engage with me. I want to engage with you. That's really cool. But to grow the channel, you've got to focus content to get new subscribers. So one of the ways that's most popular, I mean, it's just how the world works, is by doing product reviews. Um, hey, check this out. You know, look at Wrangler Star. Some of the stuff that he's he's done to attract new people is like testing the cheapest drill on Amazon. Well, uh, you know, those are cool videos. I mean, I like seeing it. You put these drills together and you smoke them out. You know, that's way cool. Tracks a lot of new people. Like 11 million people have watched that video. Um, that's not his main subscriber base. You know, they enjoy it. They understand it. They understand why he's doing that. But you've got to do stuff like that. So I'm trying to reach out to companies uh, like Duluth um that would send us product that we can review because we'd use it not just to do it but like stuff we would really use like the the um heat pump that we got you know that was a big deal we needed one and so i reached out to the company and we got one i got to do a product review on that and that's going to attract new people same with the fridge uh we well i didn't need one but man come on who doesn't want a beer fridge in their their shop i mean i need to put a bottle of whiskey in there too uh my cousin called me out on that one so i got to get that done uh 
you know, in some of the, the lights that we've done, you're going to see a video where I change out the lighting in the shop to LEDs. Uh, we got that sponsored, uh, you know, so we'll do some more product reviews. But those are ways that we can improve the channel. And then Patreon, you know, is a big one for the subscribers. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, all right. So, Ian, yeah, Battlestar Galactica had a very good first season as well. That was a strong sci-fi series uh, for sure. Sorry, great. I still like Stargate better. I'm excited for the new Dune, but honestly, I remember watching Dune with my mom when I was a kid, and we watched it every time. It would come on and be like a four-part, you know, four-night thing, and we would watch it, my mom and I, together. So it's they're going to have to do really good to beat the Dune that's already out there. I think that's the best one. And I've always wanted to build a still suit. Ever since I watched that, I want to build a still suit. Uh, I, that just needs to happen. Okay, what kind of digester? It'll have a continuous batch, uh, continuous fed uh, digester. Uh, the tanks you've seen already in a previous video, the one that says this cures all, uh, those tanks, even in the thumbnail, you'll see it. That's going to be the digester tank. They're commercial off the shelf tanks, but they're going to be, I've modified them uh, and they're going, I had the manufacturer modify them for me before they shipped uh, to be able to do the loading and the way that we set up the system for gravity load and everything uh, has been set up to where they're going to work and we don't have the loading problem like we did in our uh, digester. I want to get back to the digester. Uh, it's still out there and I want it to be turned back on. We piped. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we actually, when we put in the solar and put in the digester in the trench, we actually put a methane pipe uh, so that we could um, pump methane, natural gas up to the house and convert our uh, utilities like our hot water heater and our stove over to natural gas. Um, but we got to get the feeding uh, solution figured out. And so we'll be back to that if time permits. Uh, makes for some good YouTube videos. So that's why it could potentially still be on the list of things to do. All right. Uh, what's up? Why aren't you vegan? Uh, because I love steak. <laughs> uh, I, I would say that my wife has got me to eat a lot more vegetables and have a lot more healthy lifestyle. If you check out her uh, blog, theblossomingtable.com, you see, see the type of stuff that she enjoys making and, you know, I eat it. Um, I've been really focused on losing weight, uh, losing fat recently. I, I've been doing uh, my home workout to uh, keep my stress under control and increase my, you know, fit to work. Uh, I do a shake every morning of multiple different powders and stuff that uh, give me probiotics and everything that I need. Um, but meat is, you know, chicken, pork, uh, beef. Uh, Happy Friday night is steak night here, and I don't ever see myself giving that up. Even though there's lots of arguments for it, I just don't see that happening for me. I just love it. I love it. I'm a carnivore. Yeah, Ian, I, I agree. The tiny spaces, you know, we need to do that. <clears throat> so um, it's just a matter of time and money and getting this stuff done. I think those grow towers, they can fit on a porch in an apartment, right? They're two foot by three foot. So they can go in a garage. They can go on a porch. You can even put them inside in a bedroom. You can put a few of them in a bedroom. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, appreciate the offer to help. Buck, Ro oh man, Buck Rogers. I watched that again as a kid. And how about this one? The Real American Hero. It's dating me. I still, I don't, I can't believe I watched that show. It's so corny, but it's great. It's still great. Good memories there. Um, have you considered solar to hydrogen? Yes, I have. Uh, the problem is when you do that math, uh, it's energy negative. It takes more energy to do all that than the work that you get out from it. Uh, the same problem is possible with the digester, by the way. You could end up spending more energy to create the gas than the energy you get from the gas. And that's, you just don't want that. Like um, we, we want it to take less energy to create it than it takes when you're using it, you know, than what you get when you use it. Uh, we want to get that as close as possible. Um, so right now it's, that's, those are things you got to work on. It's like uh, for our loading solution, you know, we could get a big screw and have it constantly screwing stuff down into the digester, which is probably what we're going to end up doing, I'd imagine. Um, but the motor that runs that, you know, we don't want that motor to take more energy to screw that stuff down in there than the energy we get out of the system. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Like you built something that requires you to pay to use it. You know, you're not getting the benefits. So you got to watch those energy balances. It's all about energy. All right. 
uh, yeah, the wood chipper idea has been brought up. Here's the problem with wood chipper. Uh, you know, a lot of people have done that on YouTube is it clogs up and then you got to clean it. And then time is an issue. You know, you got to, you're putting all that stuff through. It's not really meant for that. And then uh, it can get clogged up. In addition, the real problem we have with the digester, and everyone has, by the way, I, our, our local university, Washington State University, uh, came to our site and we showed them our digester. They brought like five people out with them and they have a digester design too. Uh, and we spoke about the digester at length and everybody has this problem, loading buoyant material. The straw or hay, so we don't use straw bedding. Uh, we don't really use bedding. We have rubber mats, it's easy to clean. Uh, and the horses and cows like to stay outside in the pasture. So uh, when we clean the stalls, uh, we have cow manure mixed with whatever hay they drop on the ground. Um, horses do a pretty good job of leave no hay behind, uh, but cows are messier. And so that hay gets in there no matter what. And um, for cow manure, it's kind of dense, uh, but once that hay gets in there, it starts to become buoyant and hay, hay floats. And it's a big problem. Everyone has it. When horses uh, chew everything, they, they don't they don't they don't uh, chew the cud, so it's not digested as well. And so in their manure, you have a lot more pieces of hay that are left over or grass. It's still there. So horse manure is very buoyant, uh, and it floats. And these digesters, the Pushin digester that we have, um, there it's not meant to have buoyant stuff in it. it what it does is it creates a film on top so that the natural loading process doesn't work and it clogs everything up and that's exactly the problem we had and it's a problem that others are having as well so i did a video titled if we do, if we solve this uh, we'll we'll i think i changed the title actually when i updated all the thumbnails but loading a digester a continuous fed digester is a problem that prevents wide-scale adoption of the digester unless you're using the digester for human or pig waste which is very liquid filled and not as buoyant so third world countries uh non-developed countries uh yet to be developed countries places where uh there's not a lot of uh rules in place uh they'll use it for human waste and it works uh, pig waste is a very popular one, but it's mixed with a lot of liquid, so it's easier to load. And that's the problem with the digester. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it was awesome and horrible. All right, I'm just looking at this. Uh, how many? Uh, we did do a poll, uh, I, you know, did a video where we asked people when I did say, hey, would you be interested in this? It's one where we first 3D printed it to scale, the small one. In fact, it's right here. <clears throat> right, this is the small version. Uh, this is a 20, no, 46% scale, right? So you got these cups. These are custom cups that go in. This is where your uh, grow media goes right in here. And then you put them in with your plant. You gotta put them in first. And then again, this is 46%. And it showed me one of the problems I had with it. There we go. And they lock in place. Uh, so they, they, they can't keep turning. They, they stop right there. And then this is one particular base that's made um, to be attached to a wall. Uh, and then you have a top that goes on here that distributes the water. Water comes down hits all these, gets cut in the uh, in the cups in the back here. Back in. The cups extend into the, uh, there you go, see in there? The cups extend into it, and then the water catches on that. The roots go down the back, uh, and then your plant grows out here. And uh, so we asked on this video how many people would be interested, and we got quite a good response. Uh, so we know people want these things. Whoops. Uh, we know people want these things. Um, we just got to get it all perfected and, and done, and that all comes back to time and money. Okay, we got 41 people on here. Hey, everybody, don't forget Super Chats are up and running. We'll go for a few. We got five more minutes. We'll make an hour and a half, uh, so get your chats in right now. Uh, Condor Man, I watched. That was a good one, uh, for sure. I remember that. Uh, if you have a bob bubbler, you can make your manure sink. A bobbler? Uh... Jen, shoot me an email. Shoot me an email, Jens Hansen, with your ideas, trm at therealmartian.com. Let's talk about that one. 
Okay, we didn't get that over here. We'll have to do a little. We got things like the six million, six dollar, six million dollar man was awesome in the movie. I still remember when the six million dollar man, woman, and boy. I forget what the movie was called, but it might just be the six million dollar man. But anyway, it was. I love that. Dog trying to eat that. Can't eat that. Can't eat that thing. Okay. Uh, yes, I've looked up building my own power wall. Time is the big issue there, buying all those little batteries and putting them all together. I've watched quite a few videos on it. I think it's great. Um, and it's something that I would like to do. Uh, I think it would make for great material. But again, that's it's it's all about the budget. You know, I mean, the projects that we do cost money. So the budgets that I've given on here, um, you know, they are... Uh, the budget that we have, this doesn't include any money for, you know, running projects on YouTube. This this is just covering our basic bills. Projects cost a lot, and uh, if you can't get sponsors, uh, if if you can't get the parts sent to you for free, um, and then you know do a product review and stuff like that, then uh, projects are very very expensive. So that's that's the problem there. Let's see here. Okay. Few more questions. Centrifuge is an interesting idea, but again, that's a energy consumption device. Um, so you got to you know, whether you're plunging it yourself or doing, a, if there's a motor involved, if there's any mechanical movement that requires energy, whether it's human or from a, a, a device, it requires energy. So uh, whatever you do, you have to be considerate of the amount of energy that these things take. A lot of the motors that you need to spin, like, all right, so when we clean the stalls, we really, to, to get a measurable amount of gas, you really need to clean the stalls every week or once a day, you know, for like a bucket filled, and you need to be putting it on your digester. And uh, so a motor that's strong enough to spin water plus that much digester is usually gonna be a 240 volt motor, uh, which is one of the more efficient uh, ones that are out there, like a three phase motor. Uh, so it still takes power. Power equals amps times your voltage. Uh, and so you can increase your voltage and your amps go down, but your power remains the same. You know, if you have a five watt motor, it takes five watts. It doesn't matter if you're using 240 volts or three phase because it's it's voltage times amperage. Now there's efficiencies that are in there though. You know, so an electrician would point out that a three phase motor is more efficient. It uses the power more efficiently and that's true, um, but still power is power. And so anything you use to move, bubble, change, any mechanical thing. Uh, if you use a bubbler, that's an air pump that has to create pressure difference, that has a motor running to create that pressure difference to create the bubbles uh, that allow you to do all this. So you've got to remember that those are the, the physics of the situation and uh, you have to watch that. So it, it's all about power. Everything, no matter what, you know, the, the thing that I want to work on is power. In alternative power, I'm not talking about wind and solar. Like I think quantum energy is the future for us, and uh, how to harness quantum energy uh, is the way to go. And there's lots of papers coming out on that, um, research being done in those areas. Uh, some of it's fringe, some of it's not fringe, but uh, quantum energy is is a place where we're all going to end up or blow ourselves up probably. Uh, Okay, so Christy, uh, the 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 stuff that I've had the problem with is, is is the balance of the the power and getting it down into the digester. Um, the uh, I have I have talked to some folks at water treatment plants. I think I have an offer to go to one up in Spokane. Uh, if you're still online, let me know. Uh, but uh, they. Um, I don't think they're having the same problem because we've we've got to take their waste goes into a, a flotation pool, you know, and it settles naturally and all those things. What we need is we've got to get a whole bunch of waste down an eight inch tube, 
And uh, I don't see that happening at, at their systems unless they use pumps, right? And we've, we've done that. We have solved our problem if we use a grinder pump. And uh, we, if we put everything into the, what we call the horse toilet, and then we put the manure in there, and then we, we add digest state, we pump the digest state up from the digester. So we pre-inoculate everything. And then we stir it uh, with a liquid stir uh, from a pump. And then you flip the pump from stir mode into grind and pump mode uh, when we were using a, a septic grinder pump. And uh, it worked pretty good. In fact, it stirs the digester and it shoves everything down that eight inch tube through a two inch pipe. Um, I really like that idea. Uh, and it's probably what they're using. Um, but the issue there is that the pump kept getting clogged with hay because the water separates the hay out. And um, that's an issue. So then it's more time cleaning the manure, prepping it, doing all those types of things. And um, you don't want to let that organic matter. One person brought up, hey, just let it all sit out and decompose. Well, we don't want it to decompose. We want it to decompose in the digester, not out in the environment, because we want to catch all that decomposition. That's what the digester is for. So, um, okay. All right, everybody. Uh, I'm going to give it a few more moments here of closing up. There's about a one minute delay, like I said, between what you see and what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go quiet here. If there's any uh, last minute questions, let's get them in. Otherwise, I'm going to be closing up this uh, broadcast. I hope I answered the subscriber questions and answers and uh, gave you guys all a good update on where we're at and what's happening. Uh, so uh, I really appreciate everybody's time. Thanks for uh, taking your Saturday morning here or, or afternoon in some cases and spending it with The Real Martian. Uh, it means a lot. Um, we're gonna try to continually improve our content and make things better and more enjoyable for everybody. So if you have ideas for that, please feel to, uh, free to shoot me an email at trm at therealmartian.com. Uh, be sure to check out my wife's blog, theblossomingtable.com. Tell your wives, tell your girlfriends, tell anyone excited about food and inspirational messages that will help you blossom. Uh, and go over there and check her out. She's got some great stuff. She does a really good job there. You can also check us out at eatinggrowsystems.com and sign up for the newsletter over there. Be put on the mailing list so that uh, you can get uh, notified with new products and stuff as we bring them out. That lets us you know, judge um, how interested people are. If you want to help out the channel here as I'm wrapping up, uh, let me pull this slide back up. If you really, really want to help us out, uh, Get these 50, help us uh, get up to 50,000 subscribers or join us on Patreon or tell people about Patreon. Again, if just 3,500 people out of, out of 32,200 people that are subscribed, if we can get 3,500 people to just do a dollar on Patreon per month, which is less than a cost of a Coke or a candy bar, uh, we could cover our basics. And that's a huge stress relief that then allows us to start doing more stuff. Um, contributing. I think you can look back at our channel. I feel very confident in saying that we have done a very good job of helping contribute positively to society. Uh, we broadcast our failures. Uh, we share them with everybody openly and, and we are getting really good response on, um, on that uh, from people. Uh, so I know we're helping folks. And uh, if you like to support that directly or, you know, and if you can't, totally understandable, especially in these times. Um, but maybe tell tell your friends, you know, uh, treat it like a virus. You know, if every person had a, I'm going to go share this with two or three people, then we'd grow the channel. Uh, and that's all it would take is to help us out there. So you can't help them monetarily, just tell people about us. We're going to keep working hard. We're going to keep uh, putting out messages, keep putting out lessons learned, keep trying things. Uh, but uh, that's what the plan is. So. Okay, everybody. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks for following along. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now. Uh, I pray that uh, the Lord is with you and your family and uh, keeps you safe during this crazy time. Thanks for following along. Uh, don't forget Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Those are all places to sign up, see the, the stuff that's happening. So uh, thank you very much. This is The Real Martian, out.